Hi Hunters, KK Etche here, and we are so back with another Stripe to Run video. This time we are going to discuss Wyvern Riding that was introduced in Monsanto Rise. Just to give a little bit of background to those who never played Monsanto Rise, Wyvern Riding replaced Monster Mounting that has been introduced since Monster Hunter 4, and it allows us to control a monster to attack another monster for a short period of time. And they have their own movesets. So it kind of becomes like a monster fighting game for a very short time. Pretty sick, right? For this video, there are a few things that can be analyzed regarding the impact of Wyvern Riding and Monster Hunter gameplay overall. There are a few points, the positive and negative that I would like to bring that needs to be considered if the system is going to be a main staple system for Monster Hunter series moving forward. First, let's start with the most obvious thing. It is very fun gameplay and satisfying to do. When you do the Wyvern Riding, especially for the very first time, there's this good feeling of controlling big monsters that hit other monsters, especially when you can control what moves the monster should do. I think that by itself is a strong selling point to newcomers since it makes them feel powerful and able to do lots of damage with very minimum effort. And speaking of damage, Wyvern Riding deals a big chunk of damage. While it can be done by any weapon type, but it might take longer. Without shadow of a doubt, Wyvern Riding is such a strong tool in your disposal. Not only dealing big damage, there's also benefit of material farming, since you get a few shiny drops when you attack the monsters during Wyvern Riding. So it kinda incentivizes you to perform Wyvern Ride as many times as you can. And once again, dealing a lot of damage and getting free materials with less effort is a good thing for many new players. But it kinda takes away those who would rather enjoy dealing damage with their good old weapon, especially if they are super good in the game and with Optimus damage build. I truly believe there should be some limitation on how this mechanic should be implemented, which I will discuss a bit later during my honest opinion section. Other than just damage and farming materials, Wildrun Riding is also a cool way for fight transitions. Let's say you are chasing a monster that just ran away, and on your way to the next location that monster has run off to, you find a non-target monster just chilling there. So you might as well bring it along to start the next engagement with the target monster with another monster. In a way, you can take a quick break from dancing with the main target of the quest. However, the real gem of the Wyvern Riding systems, I think, the way they add a monster to be ridden during the fight at the end of the final boss of the game. If I remember correctly, it is really sick while you fight Narwa, and towards the end, Magna Malu shows up. And you can Wyvern Ride Magna Malu to kinda clash against the final boss, so in a way, it's like telling the nature is also trying to prevent the Calamity, which is the final boss, from destroying everything. But there's no direct rivalry between Magna Malo and Narwa, so it does seem kind of weird that Magna Malo just shows up out of nowhere. However, they did improve this. Something really good happened during a Matsu fight. So instead of a monster coming out of nowhere, Master Atsushi went away for a short moment and brought us a surprise. You get to ride Thunderlord Xenogre, or in this game they call it Apex Xenogre. I'm still kinda salty on how they handle the Apex monster, but that can be a topic for another video. So basically, it is a homage to Monster Hunter Portable 3rd, the Amatsu and Xenogre rivalry. When this happened for the first time during my first fight with Amatsu and Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak, I jump out of my seat because I understand the reference that they are trying to show here. That was a very commendable effort that developer put when it comes to finishing up Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. So basically, when it comes to fight transition, overall it truly hypes up the overall fight as you are truly fighting a mighty creature and you can take all the help that you can get. However, this can also be a bad thing for some since it kind of takes away the personal fight you have or people would call it the dance against the monster. Like during Fatalis fight in Iceborne, you are truly by yourself, utilizing anything that is within your reach in order to slide this walking calamity. And having Wyvern riding during that moment would have been very 
odd and kind of disrupts the whole flow, at least in my opinion. So there's an argument that can be made both ways regarding this. I would say that maybe the old school hunters would prefer not having Wyvern riding, while maybe the newer player are fine with it, maybe even love it. So which side are you on? Tell me all about it in the comment section. I'm really curious about the data that I can gather regarding people's preference when it comes to Wyvern riding. And I'm done with my analysis, but now let me give you my honest opinion on Wyvern riding moving forward in Monster Hunter series. Honestly, this mechanic really opens up the overall gameplay evolution of Monster Hunter series when it comes what kind of mechanics can be implemented in this much beloved series. But for now, I do think that the system should stay since I would assume there's a quite a huge portion of the player base who really love these mechanics. However, I do think that this system is a bit too strong to be accessible to everyone, and it can be abused especially on the 4 player setting. From people that I've seen online, when they're playing in a group, they would get ready to grab 2 different monsters to be weapon ridden and deal tons of damage to the main quest target, which I don't think it should be easily accessible like this. If weapon riding is going to be a permanent mechanic, I believe it can be done with a very strict method, like it can be only triggered using a specific weapon, maybe insect glaive for example, or other weapons that like to be airborne, like the dual blades or sword and shield. Or make it only available by having skills, which without the skill you will only be mounting. And if you have the skills, instead of mounting, you will end up weapon riding. Just an idea here. And also lastly, using an endemic life, like the puppet spider in Monster Hunter Rise. And personally, having played Monster Hunter World again, I do feel the good old way of mounting is more interesting and fulfilling as you are still engaging with the monster closely, making sure that they don't shake you off or hit you to the wall, and you need to constantly jumping around its body parts and keep hitting them until it actually falls down. And lastly, as for why when riding a monster against the final boss, once again, it is an amazing thing. I do believe that it could be done a couple of times, but has to be done in a very special way, like how it was with Amatsu which mean monsters that has a rivalry with each other should appear in the final boss. Otherwise, it can get old quite fast. At least that's what I think. Alright, that's all I want to say about Wyvern Riding. I might have missed a few important points regarding Wyvern Riding analysis, so I apologize for that. And if you want to add more interesting points about Wyvern Riding, let us know in the comment section. Other than that, what are your thoughts on weapon riding mechanics overall? Should weapon riding be a mainstream mechanic? Or should it be restrictive like how I suggested? Or you want to be the old traditional way? Don't include it in Monster Hunter Wild at all. Do let me know what your thoughts are in the matters in the comment section below once again. That's all I want to say. Before I end, do leave a like and subscribe to my channel. With a single click of button, it will make my life to become so much better. And I can continuously to provide you with gaming content, especially Monster Hunter content. With Monster Hunter Wild's next trailer should be out in about 4 months. I still have a lot of content to make regarding Monster Hunter. Until the next video, stay sharp hunters.